Regenerative farming is all everyone talks about in the farming world right now, and rightfully so. Aside from the mass food shortage around the globe due to the current Russian and Ukraine war going on, regenerative farming is the main topic. Farmers want to make sure farming is net zero and that it can carry on in a regenerative manner. So stay tuned to today's video as we discuss how regenerative farming boosts soil health, yielding more nutritious crops. First up, what's the deal with regenerative farming? Nutrition is really important when it comes to us eating the right foods, but did you know that changing what the plant itself eats can actually affect how the food tastes for us? This is why regenerative farming needs to be just right, as changing how the food tastes too much basically changes the entire food in the first place. A recent study came along and compared various nutritional contents of grown crops that were using traditional methods to those using regenerative methods. It was very difficult to find studies that had explicitly looked at soil health and how that affects what gets into food. Lead author David Montgomery, a professor of Earth and Space Science at the University of Washington, told Bay. We did the experiment that we wished was out there. The goal was to try to get some direct comparisons where you controlled for key variables. The crop is the same, the climate is the same, the weather is the same, because they're right next to each other. The soil is the same in terms of soil type, but it's been farmed quite differently for at least five years, Montgomery said. In their findings, they discovered that those foods grown in regenerative farms contained on average more calcium, magnesium, zinc, and potassium, as well as more vitamins. These crops were also much lower in those elements that can affect humans in a bad way, such as sodium, nickel, and cadmium. Across the board, we found these regenerative practices imbue our crops with more anti-inflammatory compounds and antioxidants, Montgomery said. Most notably, soil health appears to influence phytochemical levels in crops, the authors write, indicating that regenerative farming systems can enhance dietary levels of compounds known to reduce risk of various chronic diseases. It was also found that in both beef and pork raised on a regenerative farm, that they had higher levels of omega-3 fats and even more health benefits. Benefits. Clearly, regenerative farming has some really great things and changes the food for the better. But here comes the question. Does it change the way it all tastes? From what has been said in studies, it's basically unnoticeable and no normal person buying something in a supermarket is going to know the difference. This is great news, as the food needs to be the same. In terms of soil, regenerative farms have much better soil full of carbon. It has more nutrients for the plants and allows a healthier ecosystem to occur and grow. All plants draw things from the soil, and this better soil allows them to get the best nutrients possible. It's all amazing that we can have regenerative farming in the first place, but it's an added bonus that the crops are better off because of it. Over the next decade or so, farming is going to change heavily. More regenerative farming practices are going to be introduced, and crops are going to be much better. Better yields are going to occur, and crops across the world are just going to be better for us and the animals farmers develop. Farming can get a little boring for the average audience member, but learning more about regenerative farming is just awesome. We are entering a new era of farming and crops in general. There are still many problems right now, of course, but it looks Looks like things are looking up for crops. What do you think about all of this, especially the new yields from regenerative farming? Let us know down in the comment section below. And now, stay tuned for some more farming news and information from the last few weeks. Next up, robots are being used for farming? The biggest issue with agriculture right now and for many years has been the manual labor involved in making it all go well. You need to handle everything with care when it comes to agriculture. You need to be specially trained and know exactly what you are doing. Of course, there are many people around that know what to do and have trained in it. Sadly, less and less people are going into agriculture and or staying in that field. They need more workers or a replacement for them. With the way technology has been developing, there is actually a mechanical solution to all of this. Drones. Drones can be used for so many different things, and agriculture just happens to be one of them. By setting up a flight plan and programming it correctly, you could spray an entire paddock with the press of a button. The farmers don't even have to be on the farm to use the drones as they work over Wi-Fi connection. This would be the start of further automation in the agricultural industry, and it needs needs to start soon. Fewer workers in the current food shortage means things are much worse than they need to be. If these drones can help speed things up and make it all more efficient, then it's going to be booming for the industry. Sadly, despite us having the technology to implement the drones on farms, the connectivity issues are what plague the system right now. This is a massive barrier that is stopping the drones from being used all the time. This is mainly in places like Australia, where the farms constantly struggle with internet and reception issues. This makes hands-free farming hard and near impossible as a good connection and large amounts of data are needed for it all to work. An issue that many are referring to if all of these plans go ahead and the drones start working on farms is what it means for actual people. Well, another industry that has already started using more machines than men is, of course, the mining industry. This industry has been using automated systems and devices for many years now, and it actually creates more jobs than you might think. Rather than having people do the menial tasks that could get them injured as well, they instead help out with the drones and make sure all the mechanics are working correctly. It's a really cool job 
job that many forget about. Finally, spray bots are the future of cutting labor. It looks like now that technology is getting better and better, farming labor is going to be reduced. We can see this already about to take effect in Australia, as these spray bots are cutting costs, labor, and all for an inexpensive price. Here are the key facts that we know right now. New and automated spray bots have already saved farmers hundreds of dollars on labor, chemicals, and of course, gasoline. Those who have purchased these bots are already getting 100% of their return inside of two years of having them, and the same manufacturers are predicting that tractors will be automated within 10 years. Things are steadily changing in this industry, and it's awesome to see. It's going to save a lot of time, money, and of course, increase the yield. Some have stated that they need an employee to keep an eye on the automated spray bots and rigs, but one farmer has done something special. Tom Coggin from Coggin Farms actually controls all of it from his iPad and waits for it to notify him of refills needed for the rigs. He also went on to talk about how the robots are in fact getting the so-called boring job of the farms, which makes a whole lot of sense. His business has also gone up to 90% on chemicals when his paddocks have been clear because they are only sprayed when it noticed a weed and not by a human. These bots are functioning all day for 24 hours, and it's an insane thing for these farmers. It saved a lot of time already and could change many farmers' lives across the world if they implemented it right now. Sadly, the problem right now is that these are manufactured specifically for your farm, meaning you have to book out a manufacturer specifically for you. Currently, the waiting list is about a year in advance, so farmers really need to get on this right now, otherwise they are waiting even longer for this to change their lives. Let us know down in the comment section below what you think of this new farming tech and how it's going to affect the industry from now on. Let us know what else you know about this if you are interested as well. And that's the end of today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed this latest video. If you did, would you please let us know down in the comment section below? It would be very helpful. Make sure to like the video, comment down below, and of course subscribe to the channel with the notification bell rung. Thank you for watching today's video. Bye!